That looks insane. Oh, honestly, butter fingers. Going back to bed. Morning, guys. So, um, just I'm just here at my own house. So, sorry about the mess, as you can see. We're going to service my own boiler just because that needs doing. So, the first thing you ever do when you service a boiler is actually check that the boiler works. So, we get it a lot where someone will phone saying, I've got a problem with my boiler, I need it serviced. Well, a service isn't there to actually repair the boiler. The service is there to actually clean it out, make sure it's actually working economically, not to actually repair it, okay? So make sure everything works. Obviously, I know everything works in my house because obviously it's my house, unless my wife's broke it in the last 10, 15 minutes. Um, so I'll check the hot water and the heating works. Not for too long because you don't want the boiler getting too hot. You just need to make sure that when, it, when you start the job, the boiler works, and when you finish the job, the boiler works. So we're going to get into it now. So I'm going to start stripping it down. So we're going to clean out the heat exchanger, we're going to clean out the condense, and we're going to do some safety checks as well. All right, I'll see you in there. Okay, so set up. So we've got our mat down. Obviously, it always protects the work surface. Um, obviously, this is mine, so if I damage it, not the end of the world, but obviously in the customer's house. Light, uni light, always useful. Love this thing. Quite expensive though i do want some more so gonna get that out just to see what i'm doing um yeah so let's strip it down let's go undo our screws let's go oh something that is massively important magnetic tray that is so useful the amount of times that you know you lose lose screws you know because they roll on the floor or something like that it's always important so yeah so here we are. This is what the inside of my boiler looks like. So this is a Potterton Assured, which isn't actually the greatest boiler because it only comes with a two-year warranty, which is really strange and unheard of, really. But it's pretty much exactly the same as like the, the new mains and the new, new Baxis, um, pretty much. Actually, the new Baxis have just come out. They're different, but pretty much exactly the same as the mains and the old-school Baxis um, because they're under the same umbrella, effectively. So what we're going to do, take out the heat exchanger, give that a clean, we'll drain it down and pump up the expansion vessel, make sure that's still under pressure, and we'll take out the condense, and obviously we'll run some safety checks as well. All right, nice one. A few moments later. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. So we've got obviously a couple of, well, 18 months worth of use, so it's not too bad, but obviously that will build up over time. So what we need to do is make sure obviously we're you can see all the dust and stuff, so we'll get that cleaned off. What we'll also do is run some water through there. We'll run some water through there. What we'll also do is take that off and run that into a bucket. So when we run the water through there, any debris that's in the bottom of this won't then get trapped in our condense, our condense trap down here. So we'll always, when we clean that out, make sure our condense trap is disconnected so all of that rubbish doesn't end up in the bottom of our condense trap, which are hard to clean out. So let's do that now, and then we'll move on. Okay. That looks insane. So yeah, as you can see, we're nice and clean. As you can see, pretty much, like I say, nice and clean inside. So what we're gonna do now is just run some water through that into a little flexi bucket, and then we'll give that, the actual insides of it, a bit of a clean up. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, um, we've cleaned the external part, so we're just gonna clean that sort of the insides and make sure the condense is um, clean. So we're just gonna run some water down here. Obviously, before we do that, obviously make sure we cover the PCB and that. Design flaw on it, all boilers, why put the electrics at the bottom where if there is a leak, the water runs down and into the electrics. Explain to me. Maybe someone can tell me why. But that's the way it's done. So you just got to be a bit careful. A few towels in the van. Or I've seen one of those. Um, there's a thing called boiler 
PCB cover or something. I saw it online. It looks pretty good. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it though. So um, anyone knows where to find that, let me know. Uh, could do with one of them. So just some warm water. Just pour it down. As you can see. So pour it down. Make sure that's nice and clean. As you can see, I've obviously removed the condensed trap to make sure that obviously is not all this dark rubbish isn't going into the condensed trap. All right, so we'll wait for that to drain and then we'll dry that out and put it back together and then we'll just kill the pressure in the heating system which and then we'll double check the expansion vessel as well while we're here and then we can do the safety checks which we won't go into too much detail but you can see some videos of me quickly doing them. Right, cheers. Other things we're looking for Obviously, so we've got our spark, um, spark electrodes. Um, sometimes you also have a flame rack that's sort of separate in this one. Obviously, it's built in, built in together, so um, fairly easy on this one. So just make sure they're clean. Again, you can get service kits for these, and every couple of years we'll obviously advise it. So where you basically replace the seals and um, the spark electrodes. But obviously, I think on this board, I think they're about 80 quid for the service kit, um, which, um, let's be honest, it's not necessary on it. You know, if you're having a, you're already charging sort of, you know, 60, 70 quid or whatever you're charging to do it. So, you know, no point charging an extra 80 quid for something that isn't 100 necessary every time. So sort of difference between like a major service and a minor service on a car, you know, but yeah. So we'll put that back together. That goes back on. Everything looks good on that. Let's move that out of the way. years later we've got everything back together we've tightened up our nuts we've obviously got our spark electrodes back in earth back in everything's back together we've cleaned out our condensed trap which can turn it on and just spray up this joint this one here as you can see here so i'm just going to spray up that one just so i can see if that's leaking because um, obviously that won't pick up on a tightness test and then i'll quickly drain down the boiler and check the expansion vessels at um, one bar so we're going to do working pressure I won't show you the readings just because obviously for legal reasons what we're supposed to have i just don't want to go into detail exactly what you should have just because i don't think that we should encourage people to do gas work so on my obviously this is connected to my phone via bluetooth this here um which i can now see the readings which should look, look good so that's obviously in that working pressure we can't do burner pressure on this from because obviously it's got zero governor on it which effectively means this is just sucking through rather than using the gas pressure so you can't really do that so yeah that's that and i'm going to i'll do a flu analyzer on it now and again i won't show you what we actually see okay so case is back on so what we're now going to do is just check the expansion vessel is actually at pressure so what i need to do is actually get all the pressure out of the boiler so the way we're going to do that is it's fairly easy on these boilers we're going to isolate the boiler and then we're going to drain it down a little bucket here. We've got a little bucket. So what we can do? There we go. So we can drain it down using this little drain off here. Come in close, and we'll see how clean the water is. This is a new system, so we're about to see how clean this water is. One of them over the road the other day was so bad. As you can see, this one's not too bad. You can see, so she's fairly clean. And you can now see the pressure over here is dropping. All right, so we'll wait, that, wait for that to get down to zero. And then I will go grab my pump in to check the pressure inside that. Let me run to the van, get my pump. Up here, as you can see, little test point. So what we're gonna do, we'll get our Milwaukee M12 pump. As you see here, love this thing. So what we do, we set this to one bar. So set it to bar, so we set it to one bar. 
and this will then pump it up to exactly one bar. So. Okay. Okay. So, as you can see here, as you can see, we've only actually got 0.35 bar in there. So, it's a good job what we checked this as this would have started causing us problems. So, let's get that pumping up. There we go. So, now that, as you can see, it's at 0.8 at the moment, it's going down, which isn't a good sign. But suggests that there's a leak in it we'll keep that there what we'll do is we'll hold it and what we'll pump it up a little bit more so she's holding now so that's better so you see now it's just where it relaxes you see so it's now holding at one bar as you see there 